In classical physics, we can use this formula to see what happens to a particle. If we exert a force F to a particle with mass m, it gets the acceleration A. But in quantum world, everything is different. In quantum physics, we use Schrodinger's equation to describe the motion of a particle. For simplicity, we just consider a particle which is constrained to move in one direction, x. It can just move along this axis. The Schrodinger's equation for this particle is like this where i is the square root of minus 1, which is a complex number, h is the Planck's constant, m is the mass of the particle, v is the potential energy influencing the particle, and psi is called the wave function. If we have the wave function at time 0, we can find it at later times t, based on the Schrodinger's equation. It is analogous to having the position x0 at time t0, and finding it at time t in the future based on Newton's second law in classical mechanics. But what is a wave function? In classical mechanics, x determines the position of the particle. The question here is how we can find the position of a particle using this wave function. Let's see what a wave function is. The statistical interpretation of the wave function proposed by Max Born says that psi squared shows the probability of a particle at point x at time t. It is important to note that psi is complex valued and the product of psi with its conjugate gives the probability amplitude for the wave function. We can use this amplitude, psi squared, to find the probability of finding a particle between two points. Look at this diagram. One axis is psi squared and the other is the position. So this is the probability amplitude, psi squared, with respect to x. If we want to measure the probability of finding the particle, between A and B, we need to find the area under psi squared graph by calculating the integral psi squared dx from A to B. Now, look at these three points, A, B, and C. The probability of finding the particle in B is zero. However, it is very likely that we can find the particle at A or C. This is how we interpret the wave function and we know it as a function that contains any information we need to talk about the particle. There's something bizarre about the wave function, and it's when we want to measure some characteristics of the particle. Before the measurement, the particle lives in a world that is very curious for us. We don't even know whether this world exists or not. But when we want to measure, for example, the position of the particle, the wave function collapses and we can see that the particle is at, for example, position C. Right now, we are not sure whether the particle still exists in that position or not. And it seems that it has come back to the strange world we talked about earlier. If we want to see if the particle is still there at C, we need to perform another measurement. There is a simple fact about a particle. It should be somewhere in this space. So, if we calculate the area under the graph, it must yield 1 because the probability of finding the particle somewhere in this space is equal to 1. This gives us the formulation for normalizing the wave function. A wave function should be normalized, so it describes a real event. It is very important that psi cannot go to infinity, otherwise it cannot be a good representation of a particle. Now you might ask if the wave function remains normalized after some time. The answer is yes. Fortunately, the Schrodinger's equation preserves the normalization of the wave function, and we can make sure that if the wave function is normalized at time zero, it will be normalized at any other point in time. Let's prove this. We need to calculate the time evolution of the normalization integral to see if it is preserved or not. Note that psi is a function of x and t, and to calculate the time evolution of psi, we need to use partial derivatives with respect to t. The partial derivative of psi squared can be calculated as follows. Psi star is the conjugate of psi, and the partial derivative yields this formula. Now we use the Schrodinger's equation and substitute these formulas in the previous one. Now we can calculate the integral. Pay attention that as x goes to infinity, psi must go to zero or it won't be normalized. So the integral is constant, and if psi is normalized at time zero, it remains normalized.